Good morning guys. Today we thought it would be a good idea to make a video for those of you who have already transitioned from Matrix to Matrix Gold or those of you who are thinking about it. So before I start, um, let me just remind you that you have a ton of content both in the Academy and in our YouTube channel. Inside our Academy you will find videos especially made for Matrix users that want to transition to Matrix Gold. So the video today, I want to make an introduction to the software and I want to talk about things about the UI and about parametric modeling. So let's begin with the visual aspects of the software. So as you can see at the very top, we have what we call the ribbon bar. It's all of this here on the very top. As you can see, it's classified exactly the same way as in matrix. So you have the same categories and of course you have some new commands. What you might have noticed already is that some of those commands have a green lightning on the corner. That means that that command is parametric. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. Let's talk now about the UI a little bit. You might have also noticed at the very top search bar. This is well, kind of inside the ribbon menu, but it basically allows you to find a command just by typing it. So if let's say I want to make a curve and now I have filtered all the curve commands. If I want to do pipe, now I can filter all the pipe commands. Of course, you might have noticed already that there are a few commands that are completely new from matrix. Okay. So yeah, basically it would allow you to find a command just by typing it. Okay. Those would be the matrix call commands. Then in terms of UI, you have the quick commands in this corner, in the left top corner. You can customize this. So if you want to drag a command here, you can keep it in here and you have faster access to this command. Okay. Display modes. This is something quite similar. Uh, let's see an example. If I have a box, I can change the display modes for that one. I have a bunch here as well. Okay. And of course, you can do that also by right clicking on the title viewport. Okay. If you don't want to see all of them, just put them this way. Okay. Then let's go back to shaded. Then we have layers. It works exactly the same way as in matrix. Nothing new here. Then let's move on to projects. So this is probably the bit that it's slightly different. So if you were to create a new project, you would just do it exactly the same way. So just got it box, for example. And you have two options here. I hit a full save or jump back. Full save, it would retain all the parametric history, all the parametric information. Jump back, won't, okay? So you can decide whether you want to keep all the information or you don't. We're gonna put this in context later once we start talking about parametric commands. Of course, you can open your projects menu and you will see all your projects here. So you have the option as well to save designer or customer, view date, status, and a few other things. So the way it works is pretty similar. It's just that there are two different ways of saving, all right? Then on the right hand side, you will click right click on the on this folder, you will see the collections. So collections is where you can save your user parts. So if you make a chunk a few times, you can keep it here and then you can use it for all your designs with parametric history and the same with parts. And you also have a few other tools that come with the software. Okay. Okay. So these are some of the tools, some of the parts that come already within the software. Okay. Then dynamic commands, it's effectively like dynamic grouping. Uh, there's a video in our academy that talks about it quite extensively. So I would strongly recommend to check that. And then dynamic commands would be all the parametric commands with history. Okay that of course we're going to talk about later on in this video. Something quite important, I understand the UI is different, but you can always customize it. So if let's say some of you might prefer, for example, uh, not to use that one and keep your dynamic, sorry, all your commands on the left hand side, mirroring the way it works in matrix. You can do that as well. Okay. And if for whatever reason you want to go back to how it was, simply click here. Preferences, troubleshooting, reset user interface. Okay, so that's going to go back to 
how it was by default. Then on top of that, if you see that, for example, you have sometimes the sensation when you open matrix goal is that you have less working area. Okay. That's not really true. It's just like you have menus on both sides, but as you can see, you can change that, but you can also do this. You can also minimize the panels. It really depends on your monitor resolution or even the size and shape of your monitor, but you can customize this in any way you want. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to do it 100 by default, and that's pretty much it when it comes to UI. Well, actually, what you can also do, if you go to view here on the M for me the menu, view, you have two different layouts. You can play with that as well. Okay. And you can also activate the menus here okay. if you want to. Cool. Okay. Okay. So next thing, the elephant in the room here is what happens with matrix files. Right. Just to be clear here, matrix gold has Rhino inside. So all your matrix files can be open and can be imported automatically from matrix to matrix gold. Okay. How do you do that? Super easy and super important. Go to this M legacy matrix migration wizard. So this is a tool that we made for you. So you can import all your matrix files into matrix gold without losing anything at all. So you don't lose any 3DM. You don't even lose your profiles that you designed yourself, everything. So all you need to do is check this box, select which files, which projects you want to import. For example, all of these, whatever you want, you can do all of them, even the archive ones. Okay. I would strongly suggest you check this and you can even check your profiles. So if you have profiles on your channels, you color rails, everything, just click this button, the checkbox and press import. Then your files are going to be automatically imported into matrix gold. It might take a while to load, but just leave your computer running for like maybe 20 minutes and you will automatically have all your files inside your project menu here. Okay. Also something to take into consideration, I would strongly recommend you do a backup copy before you do this in a separate hard drive, um, I don't know, cloud-based service, whatever, just in case. Okay. Okay. So now that we covered the important things, well, actually in regards to matrix files, this is the tool that you would use if you want to migrate all your projects. If you only want to open one. So for example, if I open now a matrix file, Okay, so let's imagine the scenario that somebody sends me a file made in matrix and I want you know, to see it, how I would do it in matrix gold. So the geometry is different for the stones and the ring rails are different, but you can automatically convert that. Okay. So this is a file that I made in matrix nine, I believe at the nine or eight doesn't really matter. So now that it's open and let's say I want to, you see, I don't have any geometry here that I can choose, not on the dynamic command stack. So if I want to make the most of this file, something like run a gem map, for example, I will need to do this legacy import. And as you can see, it's telling me that the following components were found. That means that these were matrix stones, not matrix wall stones. And the same with the ring rail. Okay. Now they are. So now here I have information about it. Yeah. So it has basically convert the geometry from matrix geometry to matrix gold geometry. So just be sure. You will never lose your files. You will never lose all the effort that you made. It's not going to waste. Okay. You can always get it back. Okay. Cool. We covered uh, importing files from matrix. Now I want to talk to you about parametric modeling. I know it's something new. It's not being used properly in some occasions. I just want to show you what it is and the two main benefits of it. Okay. So I would say probably the main benefit, I'm going to show you an example now is that you can make model once and if you need to work on any modification you can very easily do a variation and by very easily i mean two clicks there are a bunch of content in the academy i would strongly recommend you check this it changes the way you work a little bit if you want to if you want to make it parametric you need to take certain things into consideration but it's really worth it because it can save you a lot of time okay let's start um well you're gonna see now that i'm gonna use some commands that you already have in matrix the only difference is that they are parametric okay how do I know which commands are parametric? Again, because they have a green lightning on it. 
okay? If I want to see only the parametric commands, check here. So now, it doesn't matter where you go, all the commands you're going to see are parametric. If you see that, for example, the render tab has no commands, they are not lost. It's just that there are no parametric commands for rendering or view or mesh, okay? But if you go to transform, you will see all the parametric commands only. Okay, so let's just start. I'm going to go to tools, ring rail, select the ring rail. And as you can see, my ring rail shows up here in the dynamic commands. Okay, let's put a stone. So I'm going to use Gemon ring rail. Okay, and now this command shows up here, dynamic commands. If I don't want to use the ribbon bar all the time, I can use what it traditionally is called F6. You just click on the wheel mouse and with the stone selected, I can see bezel. Okay. That's exactly the same as in matrix. So I can do something like this. And now I can use cutters, cut to ring rail. Okay. So let's, let's stop here for a second. Okay. I got the ring rail, the gem, the bezel, and cut to ring rail. However, what's the real difference here? Let's say, let's change the finger size first. As you can see, everything is updating in real time. Okay? So I can work a bit on the design, do some changes, and carry on again. For example, I'm going to change the stone to an oval and everything is updating in real time, okay? We're gonna see that example, we're gonna see another example in a bit that it's gonna show the benefits of parametric a bit better. So let's do now outside ring rail, okay? Like that, and now profile placer, okay? I select an outside ring rail, I can choose profile like this one, okay? And now I'm gonna add the profile, right over there and let's leave it like here and now let's sweep this up okay so it's all pretty similar pretty easy just gonna make this flat and this a bit like that but I want to touch the ring a little bit more okay and this is mirror copy okay so we just made a ring okay really easy so let's assume that for example this is a request of a customer that has told us that they want to ring whatever size with whatever oval shape but then they come to the store and they somehow got the finger size wrong and the size of the stone is not the right one okay or you have another customer requesting for this so all you need to do is adjust finger size and then go to gem and let's change to a cushion that is bigger okay, and they want it higher okay it's pretty much done and if you want you can do this as well so as you can see we've changed the design completely in just two clicks okay traditionally in matrix you could not do that as a matter of fact, we could even put stones on the sides. So we go gem and curve. So let's say I have stones here. Okay, and I want to change the finger size. Everything updates, okay? So I retain all the information at all times. Okay. That's something really, really powerful. And as I said, the idea to have a design that's parametric is really powerful in case you need to do modifications. So for example, this ring, you can work on four different variations in front of your customer pretty much. I'm going to show you how now. And you only need to make the model once. So for example, we get some users that they have their lead designer making the parametric models and then the junior designers can work on the modifications really easily. Okay. So whatever really works for you. Um, the second benefit of this, of parametric modeling, is that if you're modeling something and you need to, you, you need to look at the ring in a certain way, 
So let's say, for example, you are designing it, but you're not sure how it's gonna look if you make it a bit lower. And if you wanna make it lower, in some cases, you need to start over again. In here, you don't. You just need to edit the slider and the design has changed a lot in just a click. So, for example, these two modifications, they are super easy. And it only took me like a second. So what else, for example, if I want to change stone sizes, okay? So it's all updating and I only need to do a few clicks, okay? So I can adjust the design in real time while I'm doing it. That's really important as well. What else? Um, let's talk a bit about um, rendering inside matrix code. So we can leave that here. So for example, the way I would use rendering, it has changed dramatically from matrix. Just bear in mind that matrix runs on V-Ray, a very old version of V-Ray. Matrix code runs on sideways, which is a new software. So let's check the render. Uh, of course, I need to deactivate the parametric commands. If I go to render, render studio, okay. It works quite similar. Of course, I would insist there's a ton of material in our academy and you can always contact any of us for support if you need help. Okay. So here are the styles. For example, I'm going to choose, we have one called Matrix Classic, which resembles Matrix Classic in Matrix quite a lot. Um, but no, actually, let's choose this one. I usually use this one. So it works the same way. I got styles and I got materials. I just need to assign the materials to the components and render them. Actually, let's assign materials first. So let's go to gems. I'm going to select, let's say, diamond ray trace for these ones. Mm. No, actually, let's make it a sapphire. Okay. Sapphire. And then this one, it's going to be diamond. Okay. And then this is going to be 18 white. Okay. As you might have seen, we have metals and render metals. The same way we have render gems and gems. I'm going to show you the difference in a bit. But I already have some materials assigned. And now if I want to preview this, all I need to do is this and ray trace. By default, I'm going to have a thousand passes. I don't need that many. 100 is more than enough. Okay, so now if I also hide these layers, I can have a very good preview of my model. Actually, it's not even finished yet. Just 85 passes out of 100. Okay, so what can I do that I could not do in Matrix? Let's say that I have the customer with me and I'm, I can show them this. I don't need to make renders. I can make renders, of course. I'm going to show you how in a second. But I can just pull up a model, show them this file, and say, hey, do you like it like this? Do you want to see this video? Um, you can even make it go faster. Of course, the faster you go, it's not going to be so, so nice. But you can tell them just, you know, look from this video. And then you can say, you want to change something. And you can change it. So for example, let's say that the stone size is too big. So you can just go edit. And okay, so now if you just edit the, the model in front of them and they can see the render again, okay, so that's pretty cool. That makes the design process much more interesting, more fun, in my opinion. And yeah, if you want to hide the lines, you can do it here, okay. So these are the regular materials. We also have some materials that are better in terms of reflections for that, for example. So this material basically, it does not take the metal into consideration. So it's like, it's, there's no overlapping geometry. Uh, that was an issue in Matrix actually. If you had some geometry, if you had like a claw on a bezel, for a claw on a diamond, you might see the metal reflected on the diamond. So basically these materials avoid that. Okay. So if you want to run a proper render, just need to click on render and you would have the same parameters that you would have in a regular render. So 
these we provide you with a JPEG, Saver, PNG, JPEG, the classical file formats for images. And you also have some After Effects here, like Depth of Field, that you can customize as you wish. Okay. This is explaining the Academy. There's a webinar about almost like an hour long, explaining how to do renders professionally. I would strongly recommend you check those out. Okay. So, yeah, that's everything for render. Uh, well, of course, you can choose a ground plane. So, go here. So, we'll have a preview of the ground plane. Okay. And, of course, you have all these styles to play with. So, that's everything in terms of this video. Um, just remember, we have a forum 24-7. We have um, a channel in YouTube with a lot of content. And I can't recommend enough the Academy. There's a ton of content on there. And you can always reach for help if you need help. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching it. Thank you.